Hi there, and welcome to, to today's Object Talk Live. Now, Object Talks are an opportunity for you all to learn about the Jewish Museum London's collection. We actually have over 40,000 objects in our collection, and today I will be sharing with you a few. Now, this month at the Jewish Museum London, we have been focusing on the theme of diversity, specifically looking into Jewish communities around the world. Today, I would like to focus on the history of Jews in Jamaica. This research has been done by the research intern, Rebecca. The history of Jews in Jamaica is surprisingly rich and extensive. From the 13th century Jewish settlers who fled after the Spanish Inquisition and found a new home in Jamaica, to the Jews who landed in Jamaica and other neighboring Caribbean countries to invest in the transatlantic slave trade. The Jewish history in Jamaica, small but notable, has definitely a role in the Jamaican landscape. But today, I would like to focus on a more recent history of Jews in Jamaica. And to do so, I will share my screen with you all now. Wonderful. So today I would like to focus on the Second World War. The Caribbean is rarely spoken about in studies of the Second World War, and even in very rarely spoken about in studies of the Jewish experience of the Second World War. But there is a, indeed a connection and a connection I would like to share with you all today. Now, during the Second World War, Jamaica was a British colony. There, on Jamaica, it was decided that an internment camp would be set up to accommodate British people from Gibraltar, who were threatened by the advancement of the Nazi armies. When people from Gibraltar only took up about one third of these internment camps, it was later decided that these internment camps would house Jewish refugees. Around 1,400 Dutch and Polish Jews were housed in these internment camps. Now let's take a look at some of our photos in our collection to explore this history in a bit more detail. Now this image here is a black and white photograph from 1942, depicting a happy memory of Jewish people spending time on the beach in Jamaica whilst they lived in the camps. This figure here shows a gathering of happy, smiling women during their time on the internment camp in Jamaica. Now there were often expectations that life in Jamaica would be like this all the time, full of great, fun memories. But this image here does not show the lack of freedom that many of these Jews had during their time in Jamaica. People who were interned at the camps were not allowed to engage in any businesses or work. People who were interned at the camps were also only able to apply for um, to leave the camps and had a 10 p.m. curfew. So they had to ha actually write an application to be able to leave the camps and arrive back at home by 10 p.m., regardless of their age. And Jamaicans were not allowed to enter these internment camps. These rules were in place because the Jews were seen as enemy, enemy aliens. They had arrived from Nazi occupied territories so it was seen as, as imperative to keep a watch on these potential spies. But of course we know the Jewish experience at this time was way more complex than that. This photo here shows a picture of a lady named Rachel Lopez Cordozo. She was a Jew born in Antwerp in 1912. Her father was a diamond cutter. They left Belgium in 1940 and journeyed through Vichy France to get to Toulouse, where they hoped they would be safe. As restriction tightened on Jewish freedom in Vichy France, 
they escaped to Spain and then Jamaica. Rachel and her daughter spent the remainder of the war in the Gibraltar camp in Jamaica with a group of Dutch Jewish refugees. Rachel eventually became a leader of the women in the camps. And here we could see a picture of both Rachel and her daughter sat in the plains of Jamaica. Little is known about what this role, being the leader of the women in the camp in Jamaica meant for Rachel. But we do know a bit about the female experience in these camps. Women often organized cooking food in line with kosher law and coordinating Jewish festivals and rituals, such as bar mitzvahs and the weekly Shabbat. Now, after the war had ended, Many of these Jewish people were still not allowed to get work in Jamaica, and many found visas and settled in the nearby America. In 1945, Rachel and her daughter moved to England, where she became a social worker. Although this history of Jews in Jamaica during the Second World War perhaps suggests a type of marginalization of the Jewish community in Jamaica, Today, the Jewish community is integrated in the local Jamaican population. There is only one synagogue in Jamaica called the Shari Shalom, which hosts the United Congregation of Israelites in Kingston. This synagogue, com com this synagogue consists of both Ashkenazi and Sephardi Jews. Now, throughout Jamaica, the island is littered with signs of Jewish Jamaican hybridity, a relationship in a constant change, a state of change and diversity. There are also really interesting links between Judaism and Rastafarianism, an ideology which stemmed from Jamaica in the 1930s, which has been made popular by its followers, distinctive appearance and reggae music. Both Jewish culture and Rastafari culture use the Hebrew Bible as their holy scripture. And there are so many cultural symbols that are shared between the Rastafari and Jewish community. For example, the Lion of Judah. Rastafarians follow a uh, very interesting dietary um, laws called Ital, which share many similarities between the Jewish kosher food laws. Many Rastafarian women wear head coverings, similar to Jewish women's shaitals. And in the Rastafarian movement, their messiah, the Ethiopian emperor Herb Selassie, is claimed to be descendant from the King Solomon. He is often referred to as the conquering lion of Judah. This once again shows the similarities between the Jewish religion and culture and Rastafarianism. This not so well known history of the relationship between Jews and Jamaicans is definitely more increasingly brought to light. Jamaica has been a safe haven for centuries in the form of shelter for Jews from both the Spanish Inquisition and Nazi persecution. Whilst their time in camps for Jewish people was not the best and brought many restrictions Many, many Jews survived the Holocaust because of the space of security created in Jamaica. It is because of the determination of these survivors to share their stories where others cannot, that we know at the Jewish Museum London and beyond about these fascinating histories. And we encourage you to share more and more of your stories too. Now that's all for me. For, from me for now, but thank you very much for listening. We hope that you've learned something new during this object talk. And please do feel free to join us in next week's object talk. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.